Merry Christmas. What a blessing to be together. Hallelujah. What a beautiful time. Thank you, Jared and team. It's just a special welcome to each of you and especially to my mom that's here this morning and my son and Aaron and Jenny and Brianne yeah, and Lincoln, Zachary and Seth, Seth Colson, no, Eden. And Anna's here, my daughter, and Addie and Zoe and Alex. So that's, that's our crew right there that uh, are here this morning. We welcome all of you. They came out on a cold Christmas morning. I know the, uh, the Har family is here. We welcome you and the Yoders and the Millers and the Laymans and the Montregers and the Nisleys in the back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did I miss anybody? <laughs> You're all welcome. Wow. Well, thanks for being here. You know, the one song we sang, I'm going to just have a short word, and Pastor Dan's going to come and, and um, have a message or however God leads him. But we recognize this is Christmas morning, and we'll see how the Lord leads us. But the, the message especially that we sang, one of the songs that, that Jared led us in, was um, Emmanuel, talked about Emmanuel. Somebody tell me what that means. What's the Emmanuel mean? God with us. God with us. The one uh, Greek dictionary that I looked at, and I, it's the same meaning, but it, I liked how it stated. It just simply said, with us is God. With us is God. It's the name of the... The definition of them with us. You know, a while ago I had shared a message on the seed. And with us is God because he placed the seed of his spirit within us. Um, in Isaiah, Emmanuel is used, the actual name Emmanuel is used about, um, well, twice in the Old Testament, which would be Hebrew, only one time in the New Testament. It's spelled uh, in the New Testament with an E, in the Old Testament with an I. Um, and it's the same meaning. It's the only times that is used in the entire Bible, Emmanuel. And it's in Matthew in, in the New Testament. Um, in Isaiah 14, uh, 7, 14, it says, Therefore the Lord shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah seven fourteen. Isaiah 8.8 8 talks about what the Emmanuel will do. He shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. And that's the two times in the Old Testament. Now, the New Testament is in Matthew. And I'm going to read just a little bit of that. And then I'm going to give opportunity just at the close here. I'm going to share just a few words and then just... Give, uh, if somebody else has a testimony, um, they would like to share about God with them. I'd like to just give that opportunity. What does it mean? I think um, Ada brought that out. She said, how is God with you in her opening? Behold a virgin, Matthew 1, 123. And I don't know if they want to put that on the wall. They're welcome. But uh, I'm going to read a number of verses out of Matthew 1. Matthew 123. Behold a virgin... She'll be with child, and she'll bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now I'm starting now in verse, um, chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she, found, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But when he brought, when he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." So all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, and now it quotes this out of Isaiah, 
Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took him, his wife, and he did not know her till she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Well, that's, we have Christmas. Today we celebrate that day as his day of birth. There was a birthday, probably wasn't December 25, but it's, we, we have a day. The Bible doesn't say the exact day, and so this day has been chosen, and we want to honor the birthday or a birthday of Christ. And so December 25, Christmas, is the day that uh, is celebrated as our Savior's birth. You know, when I think of that, um, the days, the fullness of time came, and then it was with us is God. God spoke. This thing of Emmanuel, and I, I, I was thinking of, of this story of even then in Luke 2 and how the message that the angels proclaimed in the closing of that was, it said they, they, they spoke and said, glory to God on the, in the highest and on earth peace. And on earth peace, goodwill toward men. How has God been with you? Emmanuel. This last, um, well, the last days, weeks, even uh, the last while, I've been, been making numerous calls on behalf of Blessings of Hope. And um, I just, before I begin, I'm always, because one of the questions that I'm always asking them, and I, I just ask, would you mind if I prayed for you before we part? And um, it's kind of a, just a couple questions that I ask. And I'm, I'm amazed at what God does in those times. I know he is with me. He's with people all over. And I, I see that. Emmanuel, God with us. And all of you would have a story. And I believe all of you would have a testimony. you say, I know God was with me. Our neighbor, um, Fran and, and Larry, we, we, we've gotten to know them over the years since we moved here in Middlebury about eight years ago. But um, she had a bout with cancer a number of years ago. And we had prayed for them then and walked with them and had taken some meals and things. Became friends. Well, th- she'd done well for quite a few years. And then this last while she had developed cancer, it kind of came back. And we had visited her about two weeks ago or so. And as we went in and, and was chatting with her a little bit, she looked at us, and she kind of had this shine in her eyes, and she said, she, looked, she said, you know, I almost feel bad for you guys. She said, I'm really close, she said, to my, my next days are going to be so good. And she knew she was dying. And there was just that anticipation. And I thought about it. Why could she say that? Because she knew with her was God. God with us. And so we got a call here on Wednesday from her husband and said that she hadn't been doing well. They took her to the hospital just to, they could increase some pain medication and things. And, and so we had, um, was ministering here at the church and it was a bit late and we were trying to decide if we should go or not. And he said, yeah, I really feel we should somehow just felt late. So we ran to Goshen Hospital and and as we got there and hunted for it, we <laughs> discovered she's not in the Goshen Hospital. She's in the Elkhart Hospital. So by then it was already we missed the Goshen Hospital hours. And, and so I called just to make sure he was still there. And he said, yeah, he said he's going to be here tonight. So anyway, we ran to Elkhart Hospital. And you know, it was a special time because in the room with us was God. And um, we could pray with her and Larry. And um, we, we then left after a, a time. But she, could, she acknowledged us. Just You could tell that she, she wasn't able to really speak. And, but anyway, uh, a few hours later, she stepped into the presence of God. Uh, we got a call that she, she died in the morning about 3.15. So that funeral is this coming week. But, um, you know, why could she face death? with anticipation, (laughs) because of Emmanuel, because of Christmas, 
Because there was a Christmas. Christ came. I had to think of numerous phone calls that I just made recently. One was just this last week. It was a man, uh, he was, and I, I talk with people that are connected one way or another to blessings of hope, but some of them fairly remote, some of them whatever, and, and some of them are just fairly random. But anyways, I make uh, phone calls on, when I have opportunity. This gentleman answered, and he was part of a mission. I, I think it might have been a, a hope, kind of a rescue mission or something. I'm not quite sure what all they did, but when I answered, when he answered the phone, and I said, and I, the way I usually respond when they answer, I said, hello, this is Robert with Blessings of Hope uh, Ministry, and, and then I just would go on, and before I could even go on, <laughs> this guy just started sobbing, and he said, Wow. He said, I'm sorry. And he said, just give me a moment. And he said, I just needed to walk away. I was in a group of us from other people. And I, I just, he said, I was overcome. He said, when you spoke the name, the words, blessings of hope. <laughs> he said, it was God speaking to me that there is hope. There's blessings of hope. The very name that you spoke is about who Jesus is. And it just reminded him in a critical time, he said he was facing something. We prayed together and he, he, he just was weeping for a, a big part of that. But because he suddenly, just that prompting caused him to realize with him was God. God with us, Emmanuel. That's, I, I love when you see, you stand back and you say, wow, that's God. And he is with us. And he wants us to know, not only on Christmas morning, but every day, he will never leave you nor forsake you. What a promise. Another call that I made was, um, it was a number that was on my list. But um, when I answered the lady, she didn't, she said, I, I said, I'm Robert with Blessings of Hope, and I wanted to thank her for her connection there somehow. And, and she said, I don't know who Blessings of Hope is. And she said, you must have a wrong number. And then I just said, well, <laughs> I said, I don't know. I said, I must be sorry about that. And I said, I said, I'm really just asking if there's something I could pray with people. I've been praying with people today. And, and she just burst out crying. And she said... I've been needing to talk to somebody, and I'm wanting prayer so bad. And she said, now you call. I said, wow. I said, there's a Father in heaven, knows exactly where you are. And I said, so this probably wasn't a wrong number. It was a number. God has your number, I said. <laughs> and he wanted to call. And we prayed, and she wept, because suddenly she realized again the truth of Emmanuel. God with us. And I just know he's with us here today. And I'm grateful for my family here. And I asked Anna if she'd have a, she shared a little bit of a testimony she'd shared with me a little bit that she shared some time back. And it was the truth too of God with her, but I'll let her share. And then if somebody else has a, a testimony they want to share, We'll, uh, we'll have opportunity. Good morning. I am not a speaker, but I, uh, I shared with my parents um, uh, recently at the Teen Center in Lebanon um, how important prayer is. And I know this isn't Emmanuel, and it's not going with the theme, but prayer is so important. And... Um, I've learned over the years that how much my mom and dad really love me and uh, the power of their prayer. Um, I pray so much for my children. And even though I'm not with them physically, I know the Lord is. And um, recently, my, my two youngest received Jesus into their heart. And um, I was able to help them with that prayer. And it just did something inside of me. Um, 
to be able to know that uh, my prayers are working, even all the way in Indianapolis. And the Lord is with me. Um, I'm seven months in. I have five months left. And uh, this is the hardest thing that I've ever done. It hurts um, to be away from them. But I know that he's with me, and he's going to help me. And soon, um, hopefully, there will be graduation invitations, and y'all can come. Um, because I, I know you guys are praying for me, too. I love my grandmother. She sends me cards every week, and they mean so much. Um, my brother and sister-in-law, um, it seems like right when I need God the most, they'll send a verse, and it'll send chills down my spine. I'm like, oof, I needed that today. Thank you. The Lord's timing is always perfect, and so... Amen. God is with you, and he is with us. Amen. Anybody else have a word you want to share before we... I'm going to close my part and just simply turn it to... Maybe I'll just let Pastor Dan handle that. If there is somebody else, I'll let him discern that. God bless you as we walk in his presence. Amen. Thank you for that, Pastor Robert. God bless you. Merry Christmas, everyone. (laughs) It is so good to see you all. Wow, Zach and Lincoln and Zach and Lincoln and Zach and Lincoln and Seth. Yes, they've been playing basketball with my sons, and I've got to know them a little bit better. Coach Aaron. (laughs) Oh, praise his name forever. Amen. Yes, it is so good to be here. Um, I want to share a little bit here. I was informed that (laughs) Brother Edgar and Phyllis, blessings to you. Thank you for coming. Can you talk? (laughs) Hey, he can talk. Amen. I was just making sure you're awake. Amen. Yeah, just keep amen, and there you go. That's what it's about. <laughs> That's where it's at. Yes, praise God. Where was it? What was I going? You kind of took me off track here. Um, oh, I was informed that if we go over an hour, people are going to walk out, so I've got seven minutes. <laughs> Lily, is that true? Oh, everything's good. Okay. I mean, I don't want to say any names, but... <laughs> Uh, everything went well, everything's under control, you have, yeah, well, that's at home. That's just a sign of good leadership, amen? (laughs) Yes, praise God. Well, this morning I'm going to share a part of Scripture, Pastor Robert. You read the verses already if you want to get them up uh, um, on the overhead. I'm not used to this. So if I veer away, just say, hey, get that thing up to your chin so you can hear. Can everyone hear? Amen. All right. So here we go. Um, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Here, Mary and Joseph were betrothed. They were basically engaged, okay? They were engaged to be married, and what happens in that engagement at that cultural time was they separated for a year, if I understand correctly, and the man would go and prepare the home for his bride, Can you imagine being engaged to someone and then being separated for a whole year? Like, this isn't even right, is it? (laughs) The lady up front's looking, are you sure this is right? Or what's going on here? (laughs) And and, and they they would separate and leave. And here, the Word of God tells us that before they came together, before they came, before that year was up, before they came back together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. How does this even happen? (laughs) Talk to me, Edgar. 
Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. She was found with child before they even came together. This is a supernatural miracle that only comes from God, friends. That's the only way. As I look at every year, this Christmas season that we celebrate, more and more, year by year, I am more and more convinced it's more of a miracle than I will ever understand why we even celebrate Christmas. This is a miracle. This is a miracle. She was with child and she wasn't even with man. We don't even grasp how this happens. And she was a virgin. And when you're a virgin, that means you were never with a man. Yet she was with child. Oh, 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 oh. I got to keep going. We may be here till noon. <laughs> there were a little nervous giggles there, wasn't there? Come on, Edgar. Stick with me now. <laughs> <laughs> you what? Well, we're getting to that. Just calm down there. <laughs> she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Then Joseph, her husband, he was a just man. And my understanding of what happened in that cultural time was that if there was a lady that was found to be pregnant out of wedlock, what they would do is take them, the elders would take them through the city and stone them. Okay? That was their punishment. That was their punishment for being pregnant out of wedlock. And here Joseph... Now we got to understand, he was away from Mary and she became with child. What do you think could be going through the head of Joseph, going through the mind of Joseph through this time? I look at this, Joseph was an amazing man. He was an amazing man. I believe he had a relationship with God. He understood the voice of God. He understood the plan of salvation. If he didn't, this story would be different. It would be totally different. Because can you imagine what goes through the heart and spirit of a man when he finds out that his loved one is pregnant with child, but he hadn't even been with her? This is serious stuff. Yet Joseph was a just man, righteous before God. I believe he knew the heart of God. Oh, I believe he spent time with God. I believe he understood God. That's the only way he could understand what was happening here. Not only was he then, not only then did he say, well, I want to put her away secretly. I just want to take her and not make a public example of her. That was the heart of Joseph. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David... Do not be afraid to take to you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. That what is happening and that what is going on is of the Holy Spirit. Now folks, I want us to get this real quick here. <laughs> Nobody had ever seen the Holy Spirit work in this way, did they? Ever. Ever. And I'm trying to put myself back in time, in that time frame. If I would have seen that Mary was pregnant and not been known with man, and somebody would have came up to me and says, but Dan, that was of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came and now there's a child. Well, how does that even happen? What kind of faith are we walking in? And when God moves in ways that we don't understand, we've got to be careful. Because if this is of the Holy Spirit and we come against the Spirit of God, there will be repercussions to pay. Because God doesn't always work the way that, that us church people think maybe He should. Uh, sometimes He works in ways that make us dig deeper to find out more of His heart. 
And I see this happening here with Mary. The, and, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, we could go on about this dream thing too, but I've got three minutes. Jesus, help us. This dream thing. <laughs> the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and he said, do not be afraid. This thing that is happening is of the Holy Spirit and it's not of man. And Joseph, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated what? God is with us. God is with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. <laughs> called his name Jesus. This, my friends, is why we celebrate the birth of Jesus. It was an absolute supernatural happening of Jesus. It was an absolute supernatural happening of the Lord. No man had any part of it. There's no man that had any part. And there's, <laughs> I, I, I look at this part. Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit to bring forth a son named Jesus, Emmanuel. God be with us. And it's no different than for with us today. The Holy Spirit comes upon us and impregnates us with the things of heaven. And we get to walk in the fullness of Him, of who He is. It's the same thing that goes on today. Well, we wonder why are some people a little more radical about Jesus than others? Because I feel that they've been impregnated by the Spirit of God and they can't keep their mouths shut. It just keeps coming and coming and coming and coming and overflowing. This is the Spirit of God. Man didn't put it there, but the Spirit of God did. I think us as Christians need to get a hold of this a little bit more and walk in the fullness <laughs> and let the Holy Spirit impregnate us what He wants to do and not what we want to do. <laughs> Honor God bless you. You've got a little life coming out of your eyes again. Thank you, Jesus. How does that happen? Walk in the sin of depravity of man and give your heart to Jesus and He comes right in your heart and gives you life again. That's our God. God is with us. God is with you. Don't give up. I always say there's no time for the spirit of quit to be around here. We're going to walk in the fullness of what God has done in us. He has given us His Holy Spirit no different than what He's done to Mary. And we get to walk in it, the fullness, the power of God. Do it this Christmas season. Do it this Christmas season. It's not about presents. It, some of the things about Christmas, I get just a little bit, oh, I get a little irritated at times. It's like, well, did you have a good Christmas? What do you mean did I have a good Christmas? How can you not have a good Christmas? Jesus was born to save me from all my sins. <laughs> And I look, why would you even ask if you had a good, well, I didn't get the present that I wanted, so the Christmas, oh, really? I got the best, Christ, I got the best present ever known to man, and that's the son, our son Jesus. He saves me from all my sins. If I never get another present on Christmas Day, what are we going to do? Are we still going to celebrate Christmas? Oh, praise his name, we better would. Because that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Anyone have anything to share? I've got to come down. Does anyone have a testimony of God being with you? Amber, do you have something to say? No, you're just whispering to your sister. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier said to just the sister than in front of the church, so kind of put them on the spot. It is, it is one hour. 
Banj, do you have anything that you would like to share about God being with you? Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so we're, next time we have a birthday, we're going to give presents away. We have one amen, everybody else like, uh, really? <laughs> but that's my favorite part of the year. I get, <laughs> I get presents and I get gifts. It's a birthday. Wow. That's kind of a new concept. That's kind of a new way of thinking there. But that's what, wow, that's what Jesus, that's Jesus. Thank you. That's probably preach someday. Amen, Pastor Robert, huh? Yeah, amen. We'll preach that someday, yes. Anyone else? Edgar, you want to come forward? Can you talk loud enough? Okay, talk loud. Yes. Amen. He was born. He was born. And when he was born, God, his daddy, sent the heavenly host. Yes. Yes. He sent the wise man. He sent everything to shepherd. He sent him all to have a party for his son. Yes. Because he was born. Amen. So don't get too dog on religion. I don't like <laughs> Dog gone, religious. Wow. Not heard the wet word in a while. Yes, Sister Lily. You know, he gives us a gift every day. Every day. We get the breath of life. Amen. We get, yeah, mercy's new every morning. It's just, yeah, the Spirit yes. just keeps filling us afresh every day. <laughs> yes, that is it. Every day we get to walk in it. Every day we walk in the newness of life. Thank you, Edgar. I love it when you get fired up a little bit there. That's, that's good. Good. That's good stuff. Good stuff. I need to find out what the word doggone means in Greek, though. Do you know what that means in Greek? Oh, it's gone? Oh, the dog is gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything? Yes, yes, no, you. Amen, amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. Yes. He's an icon. He's a legend. Call him a legend. Griner's legend. And in saying that, would you bring your team forward? We'll have a closing song. Is that, is that good? Like five minutes over. Are, are, are you all right with that worship team? Yeah, they're not going to say no in front of everybody, are they? <laughs> oh my, yes. We'll have a uh, we'll have a song here, and then Aaron, if you would close the service out in prayer, if you could do that.
and uh, we'll just worship one last song. Jared? Are you good, Jared? Um, well, my, my favoriteist, if you can name the, the favoriteist as a word, is O Holy Night. But we've sang that already, but I could listen to that again. Um, do any of the, the visitors, how about, how about Mama Reed Secker? Do you have a favoriteist Christmas song? They're all good, aren't they? O Little Town of Bethlehem. Amen. Thank you for that, Jared. Um, there is a notification here that there's no water pressure in the restrooms. <laughs> so if you can go home or the nearest gas station for today, we would appreciate that. <laughs> um, but uh, Ray's been notified, I guess. And that's one thing I did forget to do is pray for Ray and Dennis and Sharon. They're, Ray is not feeling well, Ray Bontrager. And so, Lord, today I pray healing, blessing, courage, the covering of Jesus upon Brother Ray. Let him be healed from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, Lord, that he would not feel any more ailment, Lord. But we know that through the Spirit of God, one touch, and he can be healed, and we have faith in that. Be with Dennis. And Sharon, today as well, Lord, I pray complete healing, protection upon their lives as they celebrate the birth of Jesus today. Lord, I pray that you'd be with them, give them courage and strength to continue to put one foot in front of the other. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Brother Aaron.
Yes, I am blessed to be able to worship with you this, this day. God is with us. Merry Christmas. I'm reminded Christ is coming again. Christ is coming again. And just like he announced his first birth, I believe it's announced of his second. And there's signs he says are going to take place. And so I'm excited, especially this Christmas, because there's a lot of stir. There's a lot of warring. The, the battles are intense. And, and we're in the championship bout. Somebody reminded me recently. We're in the championship fight. You're in the ring. you got to know it. you got to know it this Christmas season. And God does use our praises to come against the enemy. That is one of our weapons, is our praise, the word of our testimony, the blood of the Lamb. God, I thank you for Christ, our Savior, Emmanuel. You had to go to heaven so that you could be with each one of us in spirit. What a gift, Lord. What a gift. Remain in Jerusalem until I come, until I visit you. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You'll be my witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, to the uttermost parts of the earth. It's happened. It's happening this Christmas season. To all the earth, that all the world may know you, Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow this Christmas. Every tongue will confess. Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Bless each one of you. Merry Christmas in Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Let's give the worship team a hand. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for coming out today, and I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Celebrate to the fullness in Him. Amen. Oh, we can party all day long in Him. <laughs> in Him. Yes. You are dismissed. Depart in peace.